Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up on iPad Today, guest host Tom Merritt shows off his favorite news apps, plus Camera Plus upgrades to the iPad, kitchen mounts for all you messy cooks, and iPad mini predictions. That's all next, plus bad piggies on iPad Today. <laughs> iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC from Citrix. Go to My PC connects you directly to your Office Mac or PC from any other computer or from your iPhone and iPad. Sign up for a 30 day free trial today at gotomypc.com. Use the promo code iPad. And by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With the iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at slingbox.com slash twit. And by Ford. Ford invites tech geeks to join the conversation, submit ideas, and grab a tech geek badge at social.ford.com. Don't adjust your television screens. Leo did not magically lose a lot of weight Aww. and get a lot taller. You did not. And a lot more beautiful. I am Leo Laporte. Well, you it look. It says so right here in the script. It does, Welcome yeah. Welcome to I... iPad Today. I'm Leo Laporte. <laughs> yeah. I believe you. Leo, you look so different. <laughs> Thank you. You must be <laughs> eating beard. vegan or it's something. The beard. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what it is. It's the beard. So, as you, as you already have noticed, Leo's out today. Tom Merritt has graciously, because I paid him, kicking and screaming. Yeah, even then he didn't really want to do it. It was $50. Uh, but graciously. Very gracious, indeed, uh, offered to sit in. And I'm really excited, actually, because it's been since we were back at the cottage. Which Has was it been that long? Well, it was well over a year ago that we weren't even at the cottage. Yeah. And I think it was sometime before that, which was the last time you were a guest host on iPad Today. Wow, I did that bad, huh? Well, it was a last resort kind of a thing. All right. Yeah. Well, no. Thanks for giving me a second chance. <laughs> well, so usually I have I, I'll uh, I'll have MG fill in because sure. you know he's another Apple guy and. You oh, know, he's Applier than me. He and me sure. actually, believe yeah, it or not. Much than like everybody. It's like three people in the world that are, and he's one <laughs> right. of them. Um, and we've had Gina Trapani, we've had Scott Johnson, Ron Richards of All About Android. We try to have kind of a rotating cast Should of I characters. Lean on one of these times. Would love to. If you could, if you can get her, I don't know. As long as she's, she she wants to be on the enemy podcast because she's all Android now. Well, no, she does App Slappy with Scott Johnson, which is all iOS. That's true. She's she is platform agnostic right. when it really comes down to it. Yeah, Eileen should absolutely come up here. In fact, I'm going to bug her about it because Leo's going to be <laughs> gone again in October. Um, so we thought today, since you and I, obviously, along with Ayaz Akhtar and Jason Howell, put together Twit's daily news show, Tech News Today. If, if you're not watching it or listening to it, you should. It's really good. Uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and we thought, well, why not use a little bit of that theme to propel us forward for our theme on the show today, news apps. Yeah, uh, and, and not tech news apps right. particularly. Uh, in fact, the, tech, the, the app I rely on most for tech news today is Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R, but that's not one of my picks. This is for, like, general news. Right. Like, keeping up on the world. Yeah, because it, I guess a little insight into how we produce TNT, because, again, it's a daily show rather than a weekly show, so there's just a lot more to it, and there's a little bit more of a rhythm that you have to stay in is we read news all day long. Yep. That's all we do. <laughs> Honestly, there isn't much to us. I, we're both doing it right now. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> you know, there's a new Google app <laughs> called Field Trip. It's not available for iOS either. Intel just announced three new Clover Trail laptops. See, this is what we do. But yes, I mean, the, the, the kind of fun thing about needing to know everything about tech news for our job is that you end up needing to know about news in general and just the ways that you can gather news. So we're going to talk about some of our favorite options on the show today. Tom, why don't you start us off? Um, this is actually an app that I know you've used for a long time. This is a news source. I probably recommended it the last time I was it's on possible, two years ago. It's possible that you did. <laughs> it is uh, the second app I launch every morning. Uh, I always start with the weather app. Just, just to kind of check, see like, oh, it's going to rain today, et cetera. And uh -huh. then I go right to BBC News. So even in the summer when it's not going to rain and you know that 100%, you just look anyway? 
Yeah, sometimes I skip it in the summer. You're right. <laughs> when we're in that long stretch of like, it's just going to say 80 every day. But it's your ha this is your habit. But yeah, this, this is, is your my habit. habit. It's like, check the weather, check the news. Before I start looking into the tech news, I want to see like, well, is there anything that I'll get myself in trouble making a joke about <laughs> if I don't know what's actually happening? And BBC News is my uh, favorite source because they're global. Uh, and and they're, they're not going to give me just U.S. news or just a particular area. They also have video, so uh, almost all the stories now include uh, a video element that, that goes full screen. They, uh, they do advertisements on the U.S. version. Uh, those of you in the U.K. are probably like, wait, BBC and ads? That doesn't happen. Uh, right. But yeah, it's, it's, it's nice full screen stuff. I, why, this, why this ad came up this first time, because it doesn't always have an ad uh, pre-roll here. But here we go. So now we're uh, getting this. And what I like is you can read the story about the news and then see footage. It's not a package, right? You're seeing like actual raw footage from the story you've been reading about. And you can change the, you know, the size of it, then go back into the to the article. Uh, see, I, lo I love that. You can that. slide through. You can customize. You're like, okay, I want to have my US news, I want my tech news, so I can get a little perspective, a little UK, a little sport. Uh, and they have all kinds of different uh, categories to choose from. And then on the weekends, what I do is I take the iPad in while I'm like making breakfast, fixing the coffee, et cetera, and I pop on the live radio because then I can listen to BBC World Service. I'll even do this in the car sometimes. Mm -hmm. in Latin America. I right love now, BBC World. Like Colombia, in fact, it's example, my favorite. When I get uh, when I get it in the right hour, it's 2 p.m. Pacific time when I'm driving home from work because I'm still a slave to terrestrial radio sometimes. But I love it when it's like, cool, I got the BBC World hour. And this is where I'm like, I don't want to have to select. I don't want to have to read. I just want to hear somebody telling me like what's going on. Of course. And on the weekends, uh, a lot of times you get football scores too. So. I, as find in, out as all in, of these as in footy soccer footy matches football, right. uh, that I have no idea what they mean or anything, but but you feel it's exciting. Like it's worldly because they're always shouting. Right, Manchester United just scored from the ten. They're not from the ten yard line. That that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, ten, it's ten feet away from something yeah, or right. meters, meters. Darn from it, from ten meters out. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, you know the World Cup is coming up in just two short years. So you need to know what you're talking about. And yeah. BBC is one to provide that. So this is a news source that, I mean, if you had something, I guess, against the BBC, it wouldn't be the app for you. But sure. it's, it's completely free. I like the BBC personally because they're so broad. But yeah, uh, you know, if you don't like BBC News, then you don't have any other choices here. But it is, it is free. It's comprehensive. It's constantly updated. Uh, and uh, it provides you both video, written, and audio content. Um, can, I, I, I rely on it. Constantly. I love the fact that you showed where it will show footage. So it's something that, when you say it's not a package, for anybody who doesn't understand what that means, that's sort of a self-contained story that you see on the news all the time where they'll say, and we go to Sarah Lane on the scene for more. And right. then you see me on location, and then we go into sort of the background of the story and why the car's on fire. And that's all fine and good. But sometimes, especially when you're pressed for time, I want to point out yeah, sorry. Go That's ahead. okay. You're just watching some news. No, I was, I, I was, I was trying to po po pull up an example. So this is just the hearings in Spain. Yeah. Right? So you're just hearing translation the of the Spanish deputy about prime minister talking about the part that is relevant to this story, which is about Spain imposing austerity measures, which is a, a big deal causing a lot of protests. I like how they sort of leave it up to the viewer, the person uh, absorbing the content to say, okay, I'm either going to scan the story and say, okay, I got what I needed, or I'd like to see some visuals, I'd like to hear some sound bites, I'd like to be there in the courtroom, but it's not sort of uh, manipulated into a story that benefits the BBC maybe more than it does me. Well, it's a good example of them not overthinking, but still making the app work for the tablet. They're yeah. saying, look, you can see the story. We don't need a talking head to stand up and tell you the story again. What might be helpful is to actually see the footage of what we're talking about in the story uh, in action. You know, see the protest uh, happening, see the launch of the, the rocket ship, or, or actually hear the words from the deputy prime minister as she said them in the full quote that might be too long to put in the print story. Mm -hmm. I love that. BBC News, bbc.co.uk. Again, it's completely free. If you are a news junkie at all, it's definitely one to have in that news folder, even if you've got a lot of others. So the next uh, app that I wanted to talk about is also not new to iPad Today. We've talked about it in the past, um, and it's gotten quite a few updates. But it is actually very good for discovering news if especially you're trying to think of 
new, you don't want anything spe too specific, like I'm not necessarily looking for tech news or celebrity news or even science news. I'm kind of just interested in learning about stuff and that's where StumbleUpon comes in handy. Uh, StumbleUpon, of course, is a way to, as the company describes it, stumble uh, the web. Upon Yes, things. ha ha, yes. Um, and the StumbleUpon app has gotten a lot smarter. It used to be fairly random. I mean, you'd get well, some a random site and you could either say, I like this or I don't like I this. I remember the old Firefox extension that was basically like totally oh, yeah. random and mm -hmm. then would learn from your preferences. But it's, it's gotten so much more sophisticated since then. It really has. The app is lovely. Um, what I can do is... Um, stumble upon I, I've been using it for uh, a number of years so the service has a fairly good idea of the kind of stuff that I'm interested in but if I just wanted to say listen I am interested in news I could go ahead and stumble an interest then I get some options here so I can say I'm interested in alternative news kind of bizarre stuff I used to use that for this week in fun all the time all of you who used to watch that we used to love talking That's about bizarre how long stories been around yeah, and longer <laughs> health food and cooking cyber culture type of a thing so I could say Okay, well, you know, I mentioned uh, tech news, so if I was to, to click on internet, now StumbleUpon is going to try to give me a variety of stories uh, that uh, <laughs> koalas to the max.com. See, internet is kind of a tough one because the internet can actually be about anything. That's, yeah, pretty much all of humanity. All of humanity is internet, so maybe that wasn't the best. Um, the, What's the, going on there? Why are we seeing bubbles? I don't know. It's some sort of a design site that I... Co that's not koalas. I don't know what it? this is. Maybe you can make koalas out of them? Uh, let's try a different interest, just to give <laughs> you a better idea that it actually works. Cyber culture. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be that's got to be yeah. something good, right? So we've got hands-on with iOS 6 and installation uh, from uh, TechHive. I probably don't need this, but hey, maybe I'm seeing that for the first time. And as you can see, when I scroll across the screen, I'm just... I'm just uh, that stumbling easy to the skip web. To the next one, huh? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it works, and it'll give you a. Uh, whoops! It'll give you a. Well, it's that easy. As soon as I said it was that easy, stop. Well, working. this is sort of a weird, almost like a paste bin type of a thing. I'm not. Well, it's, exact... the, it's the page. Yeah, you're just moving around on that, on huh. that page now. Well, okay, I'm weird. kind of striking out here. I think I just got a weird page, but let's say I'm like, well, this is crappy, I don't like this. I can go ahead and thumbs down this, yeah, and then go. I'm not gonna see something like this again, uh, which is, you know, can be extremely helpful. That's the idea uh, with StumbleUpon, and I think that it's probably, if you spend a lot of time on StumbleUpon, like I said, when Stumble says, I've, we've got content for you, um, this can start to turn into a news source, because you probably want, especially if, again, you're a busy person and you want news that's going to be somewhat relevant to you, there's probably a lot less random stuff that you're gonna find interesting and exciting and more just stuff that is just not for you. So it's worth it to um, help stumble upon get as smart as possible. It's very much the Pandora model for news. You know, you like something, stumble upon will say, okay, you like bizarre stories about Florida, got it, you'll probably see more of that when you continue stumbling. Well, it's a, it's the, I like this idea, whereas the BBC News app I use because I want to know what the BBC thinks is important, right? Mm -hmm. it, may find, it may expose me to things that I don't know that I would want to know about. Whereas this is saying like, no, I, I want you to learn what I like and give me stuff that I want more of so it's more personalized. Exactly. And this is, okay, so I'm looking at stuff that's tailored to me. 22 things I'm doing wrong from BuzzFeed, love it. Really? How Did to I... clear a blocked nose, actually oh. something that I need pretty regularly. <laughs> that's in a health section because it knows I like health stuff. Uh, famous movie quotes, as if spoken by a proper Englishman. It's, I love this stuff. No, of course, again, we're getting into my personal interests, which are not so news-based, but I can search through this news isn't, stories. But this isn't, tell me the most important things I need to know today. This is, this is more like, tell me stuff that's going to be fun for me to read, that's interesting. Yeah, or give me information that I wouldn't know to have uh, sought out somewhere. Yeah. It might not be on BBC's front page, or ever on BBC. Right. But it doesn't mean that it's not interesting and important to me. And it's, make me a smarter person. Right. The BBC is the old model of let's let's set the agenda for the mm -hmm. people uh, based on what we think they should know. And this is more like set my agenda based on what I like to know. Yes. You know. And, and there, there's good and bad on both sides. There are a lot of we've talked about these before. A lot of these get smarter news apps. Uh, uh, why can't I think of them now? Trap um, it. 
Well, tr okay. All right. All right. Well, I was going to say like Zeit. Right, right, right. Uh, there's, there's, of course, there's yeah, the daily. There's tons of them. Uh, and, and the, well, Zeit is a great example of something that the more it knows about the kind of stuff that you want to see, the more that you'll get your news. But again, it's a little bit less random than something like Stumble Upon because Zeit is pulling from, you know, CNN, MSNBC, uh, and Gadget, depending on, on mm -hmm. what you're looking for. But you mentioned Trap It. And I always get a little bit confused because when people say trap it, I think of trip it, and that's a totally different thing. <laughs> yes, trap it does not actually make sure you don't miss your plane. Uh, <laughs> Can trap I it, it is something to read while you're waiting for your plane to take off. Uh, it's, it's another one of those customizable news sources. So, but the idea is that you can actually include your social graph in with your own preferences. So you, you tell it, uh, you know, these, these are my Twitter followers, and I, those people you follow on Twitter, your Facebook friends, they have to be part of Trapid as well. But it'll search, it'll match you up and say, okay, these people like this kind of stuff, so maybe you will like it as well. We're going to draw from all of these and it gives you topic-based uh, things that you can create on your own. So you can see I have technology here, mm -hmm. uh, but I also have science fiction, science, rugby, and they even give you some help in creating these things. So if I, if I scroll, all, it's so easier to do when you're not uh, pressured. Need ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, enter a keyword on a subject you care about. So if you're like, well, I, I, I want to know about rugby, you would type in rugby. But if you're like, I don't know what I want to know about, but I want to add another topic, you can press the need ideas thing and it will actually prompt you like, what about food? What about current events? What about culture? Oh, that's cool. So let's, yeah, let's go with culture. And it even says, what about Shakespeare, literature, etymology? Uh, Shakespeare would be a good one. So then you press the little trap it button. So you don't really have to think about what you want to read. And Trap that, it just says, yeah. okay, well, what do you like? What kind of a person are you? Let me try to guess And what. it created a Shakespeare channel. And then if you're like, well, wait a minute, this isn't telling me the things I want to know. Read like Rory Gilmore. I don't care. You can vote it down, right? Mm -hmm. You can put the little down button. Uh, and, oh, it's teaching me how to, how to rate things. You're, sort of, you're still in a little bit of a tutorial. Well, because it's Make a sure new that channel. you use Trap at the best. But I'm going to vote it down, but it's not just saying down. It's saying, well, why don't you like it? Is it not relevant? Do you not like this website, this source? Or is it just spam? Is it somebody like who's you know in, in, taking advantage and trying to game the system? And I'm just going to say, eh, it's, it's not relevant to yeah. me. Yeah, May, maybe, maybe that source could offer up something that I like. I don't want to block the source. Right. Or, but if it is coming from a website, you're like, ugh, I hate this website. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got the opposite politics of me, and I never want to see it again. You'd pick that one. That's great. Uh, that's something that I sometimes come into when I thumbs down something or say I dislike or whatever, you know, the, the I find this negative story. It's like I almost want to give them a little bit more information. Like, it wasn't badly written. No, I like, yeah. I like <laughs> you know, and you can, I don't want to filter out too much of this type of a thing. And there's lots of sharing options. You can send to Facebook, send to Twitter. You can email a link. You can also uh, mark it in uh, Instapaper, Evernote, uh, and, and even Trap It has their own little uh, trapping reading list that you can get to up here, which I haven't added anything to apparently. But uh, And then there's featured traps. So the last thing I want to mention is taking some of the traps that people have created uh, and, and highlighting them. So replacement refs, uh, highly in the news this past week. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, fashionable stuff, denim, Reddit. These are just saying, like, here's some other traps people have created that, that you might want to add to yours. Beer and brewing. I think I'm going to add that one. You know, someone in chat room says, this sounds like additions by AOL, and you know it is similar. Yeah. It is very it's similar. similar concept. Additions is another one of those sites that's like, okay, we can pull from a variety of news sources. These are trusted news sources, but we're not just going to give the news to you and say, well, this is the best news. You tell us what you like and don't like. Yeah, if for some reason you've got something against this gadget blog, you don't ever have to see anything from the gadget blog again. It doesn't really matter. Um, and there are quite a few of those. In fact, I'm looking at my app store right now because as of yesterday, there were app collections and they had a really nice news collection actually. Let's see there if I can is. get... Oh, Zbox is in there now. Too. Yeah, it is. That let's, just launched. Let's see if I can find the news apps from... Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's your news. It's under essential apps collections. So if you go ahead and click on your news, this is it's some obvious stuff, some not so obvious stuff. This is news sources. Yeah, they have BBC. Yeah, exactly. AP, the AP, Time, BBC. Newsweek, CNN. It's all the big guys, really. They don't Plus, have Trap It, though. They Well, Customize Your News would be under here. So let's see if they have Trap It. No. No, they don't. Ha. Ha ha.
You pulled one over they do have on them. Flipboard, though, and and Flipboard is the most popular. I mean, that's Flipboard is the pretty look. by far. Anytime Leo and I do a year-end roundup, what one or here are the five top apps you need, we both have to include Flipboard. And it's just honestly, that's that's like when you say BBC is the first thing you look at in the morning. That's like how I feel about Flipboard because I just have everything set up a certain way and I find it fun to read. But it's certainly not your only option, it's just one of many. One of the options that I did find in this whole Your News category, and the App Store actually does a pretty good job of this. Usually I like most of the collections that they put together, but there was an app called Frequency, so you can see it's in here, that I had not heard of before. And it says, Frequency, tune in to watch videos. So I go, okay, I kind of like the idea of that. So it's, uh, it's news. Um, uh, news delivered to me via a variety of video content. So maybe you'd be pulling from the BBC, maybe you'd be pulling from a lot of stuff. Well, uh, I think it's worth pointing out that while frequency seems like a pretty good idea, I had some extremely mixed results. Now, first of all, it's just telling me that my login expired. I don't believe I ever had an account. So I say I have an option to connect with Facebook, sign into my existing account, or just start using Frequency. Okay, I don't want to sign in with anything, so I'll just start using Frequency. Now, the idea behind this is, here are my sources, right? I could, I could connect to Facebook or Twitter, so presumably if you uh, shared something via Twitter that was a video source, that would come into my feed. I see. But then I've got a variety of other sources here too. I've got Reddit video, I've got Mashable, some stuff from the Vimeo staff picks. So okay, I go, okay, well here are the featured sections over on the left-hand side. Let's go back to, uh, you know, just straight up news because we're talking about news. It's gonna go ahead and populate up popular channels. Okay, you know, all right, I'll go ahead and add CNN. AP is already added, Al Jazeera I'll add. Okay, this seems pretty cool. Yeah, all right. So there's, there's some stuff that I've added, but let's just say, well, you know, I'm kind of interested in just looking at stuff that's trending. Um, uh, 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 stories that are trending. Oops, I'll go ahead and look at the frequency top 25. All right, how time travel works, that sounds really awesome. And then, oh, it's a back to the future thing. Is that really what it is? That must just be something else. Now here's where I've found issues with frequency. Oh, that's a documentary. What do you need on a record? tells you how oh, really? time travel works. Yeah. Okay, so this is just, that was just a, a screenshot showing something from Back to the Future. Okay, all right, so what's nice is that this is pulling from a Vimeo video and it's playing just fine. Earlier, when I tried to test out frequency, about half of these videos worked and half of them didn't. Uh, J.K. Rowling releases first uh, Harry Potter book, CNN, okay, well now it's actually working fine. So, you know, maybe frequency, it, being that it's relatively new, was hiccuping when I tested it before the show. It seems a little bit better now, because my point was going to be, if I was getting a bunch of these errors, I wasn't going to recommend it to you, because why would you recommend an app that doesn't work that well? But, but it's working better it now. actually seems pretty stable. And what's nice is that since you have the option of just saying, hey, what's trending? What are the, what, what's the popular stuff coming from the big news sources? You can do that, which is what I'm doing now. Obviously, you're still choosing. Um, uh, this reminds me of Touch TV, which I use sometimes. Uh, I don't even know if I know Touch TV. Touch TV uh, is, is a little simpler. So it just shows you these big tiles based on channels. And you add the channels from their list of, of preset channels. So, you know, they have the same kind of big names. They have Wall Street Journal, they have ESPN, they have ABC News. Uh, and then once you've picked your channels, then it's, like, it's more like a TV metaphor of you see all the channels and you click in and you can watch whatever the latest video from that channel is. And once that video is done, another one follows up. So mm -hmm. it's, it's less... Less like that in that it's more of a lean back experience than a selection yeah. experience. But it's that same idea of like just picking channels uh, from major sources and pulling in the video from around the, the world. That's great. It's worth mentioning too that frequency, it can be a selective experience as you saw me kind of selecting videos. Or I could say play the trending stuff and it would play one after another. Mm -hmm. Apparently, apparently... Um, it should also work with built-in AirPlay. That's not something that I've been able to test because, again, when I was playing around with it yesterday, it was it was wonky. Um, but that's nice too. So you sit back, you watch the news, you know, and it's coming from your iPad, but you watch it on your big screen. Touch TV was working for me just fine minutes ago, and now that I want to show it, so the video isn't working anymore. I think you stole all the video. So it's either frequency or it's Touch TV. Yeah, you can't have both. It's one or the other. Yeah. 
You gotta pick a side. We're at war. <laughs> well, let's just blame Twit's internet. Yeah. Twit's it, internet. Because oh, the thing is, you is click it, worst? it plays a video, and then if you if you say done, it comes back to this nice screen where you can kind of see all the videos from that particular channel. I don't want to launch any of these because they're not. You want to be selective. You want to you want to hear just, about Kristen Stewart. Of course I do. They're back Team together. Team Edward, man. Oh, thank goodness. Thank I was goodness so they're back together because you know Twilight. Uh, Breaking Dawn Part Two is a movie draft. Now people won't be interested in going because well, they're back together. I think that they they're... know how that love story ends. Well, they yeah. love a good love story, right? Sarah has that movie in our movie draft, our frame rate NSFW show movie draft, and there's really no reason to go see it. Honestly. Well, it, except that there is. You know, can I at Leo Laporte you and, yes. and add another app in here because Why not, I just Tom? want to give reader a little bit of a, a make of me a... comfortable. <laughs> make me feel like this is a normal show. I just, go off give, the rails. I just want to give reader a quick shout out because this is my RSS reader that I use every morning to look at the tech news. And bar none, it is the best tablet RSS reader I have ever found. And I've talked about it on iPad today. I know I talked about it the last time I was on iPad today. It's been out for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just fantastic. And and you customize it with Google Reader, yeah. uh, although you can use different sources now for it. They've, they've added other sources. It's not just a skinned yeah, Google Reader. Uh, you could use other things. And then uh, you go in, you look at your feeds, you can read them. It has a built-in browser, so if you want to read the, the full story as it appears, on the website, you can do that too, uh, and then you can star things for later, and it's just it's very smooth, very well designed. I love that reader. That's R E E D E R, and not available free. anywhere else but iOS. That's what the sad thing is for me. I would like to be using it on my Nexus Seven, or or, or on my they desktop. They do have a Mac app, don't they? They do have a Mac app. You're yeah. right on OS X, but, it's all, but no it, Windows. They're obviously Apple developers, yeah. and for whatever reason, they haven't felt compelled to make an Android version or something else. Um, Maybe enough people don't know about it. Uh, I, I, I just can't recommend it enough for folks with an iPad. Yeah, Reader, reader is great. Which, if you don't, why are you watching? It, reader, uh, readers are one of those things where when people say, RSS is dead, I'm like, no, no it isn't. Yeah. It's actually great. You just have to know how to be able to absorb it so that it is the most positive experience you have. Uh, OK, so we, we mentioned a few apps here. Tom had a couple, couple curveballs for us. So these are news apps, but they're, it's certainly not an exhaustive list. Um, and again, I urge you to go into uh, the App Store and look at their news apps collections, because you probably have a lot of that stuff downloaded it already. Some of it we've talked about on the show, majority of it, but not all of it. Or you might want to revisit something that maybe wasn't up your alley a year ago, because remember these apps get uh, updated regularly, and everything's getting updated now for iOS 6, so it's a really good time to make sure that you've got the uh, the most up-to-date versions of all, your, all of your apps. But if you need a refresher and you kind of forget what we talked about five minutes ago, don't worry about it. Everything will always be written down, twit.tv slash IPT. That is where our show archives live, and that is where all of the links to the apps that we reference in the App Store, news stories that we talk about, you know, wh where that news uh, came from, that sort of a thing. <laughs> you can revisit old shows. Uh, last week, Leo and I talked about quite a few things. Leo was really hopped up on Hopstop. We were talking about transit app. Uh, um, options with iOS 6 and people getting uh, a little bit annoyed that, that their transit options are stripped out. You actually have more options. That's kind of the funny thing about it. So they're just not all in one place. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like the options are, it's, it's almost a great time to figure out what transit app is better than what Google was already offering you if you ever had any problems with it. But hey, that's last week's show. That was episode one, uh, 16. So uh, you can always... Uh, keep up with everything at twit.tv slash IPT. And a quick reminder, if you're not watching us live, hey, we're glad to have you on demand at any time of day, any time of the week. We are uh, also in HD now, so if for whatever reason you like to watch us on your big screen or whatever and you didn't realize that we now have a new HD feed, we do. Um, that goes back, oh, I gosh, 10 episodes ago or so now, so you can always upgrade and you can see Leo's pores better. Uh, I know that he likes that. Um, but a reminder that if you do want to watch us live, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a more raw show, and we're looking at people uh, uh, giving us feedback in chat. Thursdays, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, especially when Leo is out, because then we start on time <laughs> at 1 p.m. Pacific, like we did today. Ah, just kidding. It's just he's not here, so I have to needle him a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so we have more news. Uh, we have all sorts of news. A lot of feedback from you guys. It was a feedback crazy week. But first, want to kick it over to Leo to tell us a little bit more oh, about here. some goodies from our friends at Citrix. Yeah, he's behind the TV. Oh. Sarah, what do you drive? You don't drive a Ford. We got to get Sarah in a Ford vehicle. I'm trying to think what would be good for Sarah. 
There's so many nice choices. You'd look great in a Mustang. I mean, that's what I drive, my 2010 Mustang. Mm, well, we're like this. See, that's what happens when, you're a, when you, you become a Ford fan. Very much so. Um, and I, you know, Ford is, you know, doing some very interesting stuff. I think you know this. They've basically focused on the consumer electronics in the car. And now they've got a social website, social.ford.com, a place where you can go read articles. I wrote one. I thought, well, I'll contribute a little bit. There are a lot of them there. Mine is about uh, Ford Sync, the app link, you know, the API to it. Uh, you know, these are my hot button topics, autonomous vehicles. I interviewed Jim Butchkowski, who's a technologist there, and I asked him all the hard questions. We had a good conversation, wrote it up for the site. There's lots of other articles there. There's a suggestion box where people who, you know, say, hey, I have a good idea. What about, I don't know, Wi-Fi music sharing between cars? You know, wouldn't that be cool? Like you're driving down the road and somebody else is driving down in a, in a Mustang. You wave at them and they, they say, you want to hear my music? You put, maybe that's not, I don't know. You think that's a good idea? You can vote on it. You can leave your own ideas too. There's an ideas section. There's a place where you leave pictures and movies of you and your Ford. It's like baby pictures. Me and my Mustang. <laughs> you can even get a badge, a geek badge, a, a Mustang owner badge, a Ford Edge, an Escape badge. It's all there. Great new site. A lot of fun. I want you to take a, take a look at it and read my article, too, my interview with Jim Butchkowski. It's at social.ford.com. Social.ford.com. We just love, uh, I mean, I just love my Ford, and I, I think we really like Ford as a company. I'm very impressed with them. And you can find out more uh, by going to a Ford dealer near you. Go further in a Ford. Social.ford.com. Now back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Leo. He's right. We do love his Ford. I love his Ford. That's I've, why we're always trying to steal it. I have ridden in his Ford once. Really? Yes. I've ridden in it a bunch more than that. Why? Why are you always getting you know, to ride in it? We go cruising. No, you don't. I don't know. I've ridden ever, in it a few times, yeah. Just like going More than to, once, yeah. Going to the store? Went out on a test drive one time, oh, okay, and then I yeah. borrowed it for an ad. I remember a long time ago, it was before, uh, it was... It was while I was still kind of doing freelance stuff for Twit, but before we were working full time. Mm -hmm. And Leo came to the city because we were going to talk about, you know, what, how could Sarah be part of Twit full time? Mm -hmm. you know, it was something that we always wanted. How much for your soul? Right, exactly. Like, how little will you work for? <laughs> and uh, he picked me up in this Mustang, and, you know, and, and I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'm, I'm giving him a little bit of grief, like, is this your, you know? midlife crisis kind of thing and he's like dude this is a cool car and sure enough we kind of was showing me the bells and whistles and i was like gosh it really is a cool car it was like a cool muscle car i want I, it i really want to tease him more about it but i like the car it's cool yeah exactly and you always know when it's leo on the freeway because he's got his personalized plates i like that he put the dot well on his plate. you got to do that or it's just when you're a you when you're an internet person you got to have a dot yeah exactly he did it right he wouldn't let us down hey so good news this is actually today's news. news camera everyone. plus camera plus is now an official ipad app this is not an iphone app that works nicely on the ipad which it had been previously camera plus is definitely not the only awesome app um for ios in fact we talked about uh leaf snap is that the... There's Snapseed. Snapseed. Leaf snap is where you take pictures of leaves. It's a totally different app. Nissan leaves. I always do that. I always get Snapseed and, yeah, Nissan leaves. That's electric car, totally different. Um, but uh, Camera Plus is probably the app, if I'm being honest, the one that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Not even the, the native photos app or mm -hmm. the camera app. I just go straight into Camera Plus because once I take an app with Camera Plus, I have so many options as far as really nice filters, and it's, there's a nice little slider bar. In fact, I'll just show you. This is it on the iPad, by the way. So it looks like the iPhone app for anybody who's familiar with the iPhone app, but it definitely uses the real estate better. So I'm just gonna go to my iPad photo library, although I can pull from photos that are already either uh, in my Facebook uh, photos folders or on Flickr, so that's kind of nice. Although nothing I have on Flickr doesn't originate on my iPhone now, but maybe it would have. And I'll go ahead and open up my camera roll. So this is stuff that's native here. And I'll open up, uh, well, now I have all this pressure. I'll open up a really, really boring picture. I'll go ahead and import that. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Oh. A picture oh. of food at a hotel. Yep. I don't know. I, it was really good food. Nice. Nice table setting. Right. So at this point, yeah, it's, it's nice, right? So at this point, I go ahead and, and say edit, 
And now's where it gets really fun. Put so the food on the plate. Yeah, so I can say like, hey, let's give this photo some clarity. That's really brighten it up type of bit. Oh, I see. Or maybe, and that's a little bit of like an HDR thing. Or maybe I say, you know, this photo's just dark. I want it actually to be brighter. I want a flash. Or maybe I took this photo in fluorescent lighting and the white balance seems kind of weird. Let's try to normalize that sort of that thing. That actually looks pretty good. Yeah, it's actually, that probably looks about as normal as possible. So I go, okay, that's cool. I can go ahead and I can rotate it. I can crop it if there's, you know, if there's like way too much stuff down here on the bottom. I say, you know, let's focus on the food. There that's we go. actually what I want. Right. You know, that kind of thing. And then the, the best part actually really, if you go back into edit, is the effects area. This is where I was saying all the filters are really nice. And they really are nice. These, these filters are, you know, if I go like, oh, I like the So Emo filter. They've all got kind of nice names. I can say, yeah, I, I really like the way that this looks. Or, or, now where's my slider? Oh, here I go. The intensity over on the right-hand side now, I can say, I like this filter, but it's a little much. I want to dial it back to more like 35%. That gives it a little bit of a, sorry, you see the, uh, the, my shirt in the background, so it's a little bit confusing uh, in the reflection. But that's a little bit more what I'm looking for. I go ahead and say done. And then at this point, I can say, okay, I want to share it to a variety of places. Take it, Facebook, again, Flickr, Twitter. I can email it to somebody. Um, I can just save it back to my camera roll. So it just goes ahead and saves it along with the original photo so it's not actually getting rid of that original photo if I decide, no, well, I don't really like what I did with my filters. I want to start over. It's not overwriting the file. And it's great. I really love Camera Plus and it makes perfect sense that it's finally on the iPad because this has been the number one uh, paid iPhone app for like two years really or one you know top five Constantly it's top. up and down yeah. from number one but it's it's one of these essential apps that um, everyone really likes now camera plus excuse me <clears throat> for iPad is 99 cents so it's not free Got you really excited yeah <laughs> I did get excited it's not free and let's make sure because I don't want to 99 cents yeah that's not bad I don't want to speak out of turn so let's just open up one more photo so I can make sure that because there's probably in-app purchases um, oh, like it, filters and things? Yeah, yeah. so on, I know on the iPhone, if I go to the I love analog section, that is extra. Well, wait a second. Oh, no, it's not. Did it for free. Did it for free. Hey, you so, paid 99 cents. Yeah, so I've actually, it's I'm getting more for the iPad version of an app than I did for the iPhone because they were doing in-app purchasing for a while. Maybe they've stripped that out. Well, you got or less maybe of a camera to work special. with, so they need to give you something. That's true. That's true. In fact, anybody who's watching the live feed who was watching Windows Weekly beforehand listened to Paul Throat say how idiotic <laughs> and ridiculous people look when they take pictures with iPads. I agree with you that it's not that aesthetically pleasing, but hey, sometimes I do do that because I have a lot of photo apps and it's like part of the whole fun of it is taking a photo and then playing with it automatically. I don't know what you mean about it looking weird. Yeah, that looks normal, right? Uh, like, yeah, it looks perfectly normal to hold up this big metal slab. You know, sometimes, like, like let's say I'm at the airport or there's some place where I'm, you know, I'm in a public place and I'm taking a picture of something. I try to pretend like my eyes are bothering me and I'm just trying to read. <laughs> trying to read. Oh, the, be the best oh, thing the I glare, ever saw. the glare, the glare, click, click, click. At BlizzCon last year, uh, right before, like, you know, the big announcement, Michael Morheim, the CEO of Blizzard, is walking out on stage and everybody's mm -hmm. cheering. I, I saw dozens and dozens of people standing up with iPads, taking their pictures, taking pictures of them. Well, because they've the already... most concentration of photo taking iPads I've ever seen in my life. And you think it's be? Why is that? I don't know. Geeks, I guess. Just you know, a bunch of. Do you think that it, they almost preferred the like this is well, just kind of I, fun and to I think have there the iPad was a, to hold uh, up? A feeling of like I'm among friends. We are all here at BlizzCon. Who's yeah. going to make fun of me for taking a picture with my iPad? Right. Well, it's not just that, but it's more of like, and they didn't have a smartphone also in their pocket right. that they could have chosen. But I feel like sometimes I've just got my iPad on me and my iPhone's dead or something like that, so it does come so, in yeah. handy. Yeah. But, I yeah. never take pictures with the iPad. No. I forget that it has a camera. I'm not a big camera guy either, so that makes a difference. But but then the camera is nice because it's not just for taking photos that you know, you're know you going to manipulate later in some photo editing app. You know, you can. Uh, take pictures of 
Well, you know, they've got like the, the bank apps now where you can take a picture of a check and then it'll That's scan true. For, that. For things like scanning QR codes, yeah, stuff like and that. Yeah, and credit cards yeah. and things like Good that point. too. So, so there's, there's definitely uses for the camera. But even if you never take pictures with your iPad, what's cool, this is one thing about Camera Plus that I should definitely mention, is that Camera Plus kind of has this, they call it their light box section. So this is like photos that are in the area that I haven't actually saved out of the app that are still sort of... They're waiting to be perfected, let's just say, and that I can revisit them. Now, I have Camera Plus on my iPhone already, and I have a ton of stuff in my light box. My light box, from this day forward, it won't actually back import anything from my light box from my iPhone, but from this day forward, now they're talking to each other via iCloud Sync. Why wouldn't you be able to just push all those that are in there? I don't know. I just I mean, couldn't. if they've got the sync, not I don't as well. know. But that's cool. That's a very good feature yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah it's cool. I think so. I think I think that's what's going on because I tried to import from my iPhone earlier, and I was like, I know I have a bunch of stuff in my light box. Oh, you were trying to play video earlier too, and that didn't work. Right, Who knows? <laughs> things just, just changed. It's a bizarre yeah. world in iOS. <laughs> that's technology for you. But that's Camera Plus. You've heard us talk about it before, um, and now it's finally an iPad app, which is more than I can say for Airbnb. And I'm just gonna throw what? that out there. How can Airbnb not have a native iPad app yet? They don't. Do they need one? Yes. Oh, why? Because you're Can't... looking at photos oh, of houses photos. that you want to stay in. You want and the double whole thing they don't look as to good. be as high res as. I mean, the photos will. Most of the photos are high enough res. You want to see that place that you're going to trash. You just do. You know. Before yeah. Before you get there and just make before a record. Before you of get it. there yeah. and ruin that person's life. Mm -hmm. You know, through psychological manipulation. Because if it's already trashed, what's the point? Exactly. High res <laughs> potential <laughs> trash sites. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, this is some feedback from our show last week. This is from Not my fault. Maj, oh, okay. who says he's an evaluator pilot for J Stars. I was watching episode 116, and I noticed that you guys were a little baffled about why Apple would add a clock app to the iPad now. In my opinion, I think it's because of Siri. Remember that Siri integrates with the clock app for setting alarms, and since in iOS 6, Siri is now added to the new iPad or iPad 3, you kind of have to have a clock app so that Siri can duplicate that functionality that it has on the phone. Very good point. Leo and I, of course, talked about the native clock app. On set, set an alarm for 2 p.m. Uh, she, she's like, no. Well, oh, no, she's working. What's talk? Oh, she don't. She <laughs> what? <laughs> it, it, it cursed. She cursed. <laughs> Look. She thought that you said something bad. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the F word. Well, you know, oh, my goodness. D was Siri, did she say, please don't talk like that to me, you Tom? Too? No, she said it to me. I didn't say it to her. Well, I don't know what you just did. I said, set an alarm for 2 p.m., and it said, you said the effing said set? I'm like, that's not what I said at all. I wonder if it's because I was talking over you a tiny Probably. bit. I'm sure that was one. That's when, it, yeah, sometimes you can't blame Siri, you know, if, if for the demos of the show when it's a, <laughs> is it, what's a room, <laughs> it's a loud room. Siri got the belt. But this is, okay, so the clock app, we talked about this last week, and Leo, I think it was a little bit Leo more than me, who was like, why would you want a clock app now? Come on, what's the deal? And the thing is, I think that uh, Maj gives a really good point. If you are integrating anything that Siri is capable of with a clock app, it, you know, iOS can't just assume that you've already downloaded your clock app of choice. Well, I happen to have, have about the six clock apps It on could this. have the functions of setting an alarm without a clock app. I mean, they, they control the whole operating system. They wouldn't have to give the clock app. But I guess what they but said, what if you said is like, Siri... you know, if we're going to put alarms in here, mm -hmm. we might as well go ahead the whole nine yards and put the clock app in. Plus, like, launch the stopwatch, for example. Yeah. The timer. It's like, it might as well all be in an app that is time-related. stopwatch is even more ridiculous on the iPad, though. That was actually something that we talked about yeah, last yeah. week where I'm like, never used it. No. It's never... I've used it on the iPhone, definitely, yeah. for timing things. Yeah. yeah. No, Leo was saying, what was he saying? He had some really good reason that he was using a stopwatch, maybe something like exercise related. Mm. But yes, I think that that uh, makes perfect sense. I like the clock app a lot. I mean, I, I agree that, yeah, it should, probably should have been in here a long time ago, but it's in here now, and I've got all my, you know, the cities that I care about the most, and I'm, and I'm uh, paying attention to them. And yes, I can manipulate the clock app via Siri. Not only is it a, a native iOS uh, uh, app now, but um, it's very nice. So. Yeah, see, F and done. That's my point. He says there's still a clock in the iPad even without the app. That, that was my point. Yes, very true. Very true. This is a more robust clock. 
sort and of... And a Swiss clock that apparently they're having to work out licensing agreements for the image. Apparently. Well, it's an exact replica, really. So <laughs> somebody got a little bit out of shape about that. We got a video tip this week, and this is about getting podcasts back into the music app if that's how you used to like to get them before iOS 6. Hey, Leo and Sarah. Donald here from a Talking No Podcast with a duh tip. Did you know that you can bring back podcast functionality into the uh, iPod app? Here's how. First thing you want to do is turn off podcast syncing if you've got it turned on. Okay, that's fine. And sync your iPad. Now, on the iPad, you want to kill both the music app and the podcast app. You do that in the usual way, double click the home button and press and hold on their icons in the taskbar and click the tap the close button. Now you want to uninstall the podcast app to do that, you know, just press and hold. Tap the the uninstall button and yes, this is fine deleting the data, that's fine. That's fine. Don't don't panic. <laughs> Finally, go back to your iTunes and turn podcast syncing back on and sync your iPad again. Finally, back on your iPad, open up the music app and check the more tab down here. And look, podcasts have returned. Now, this might take one or two tries to get, uh, to get it to stick. So if it doesn't work for you at first, try repeating the steps again. Anyways, hope you like the tip. Uh, be sure and check out my podcast, Otaku no Podcast, for the latest news in Japanese animation, anime, uh, Japanese culture, food, travel, and so on. Hope you enjoyed the tip. Sayonara, Jane. Yeah, I loved that tip. That's Very well great. produced. It does tip. It was well produced. I noticed Too he wasn't well subscribed produced. to iPad today. Well, yeah. What's up with that? What's with Mac OS maybe, 10? Maybe he just wanted to seem like, listen, I'm cool. I know about well, He's not too podcast. cool to plug his own podcast. No, well, they never are. They never are. <laughs> but, we get but a lot of plugs on this show. Good yeah, tip. no, this is a great tip. Of course, I've got the music app open right now, and sure enough, you've got your story, you've got playlist songs, artists, albums, and then in the More tab, you've got genres and composers, but again, this is music-based. Now, of course, there is a separate podcast app, which might be working out just fine for you, but... Actually, I know it's not working out for many of you because a lot of you have Probably a problem with the podcast app. Yeah, yeah. But this is it's nice functionality to say, you know what, I actually just liked it in my music app before. Why did you take away my right? And you can, uh, you can uh, put it back in uh, to the music app manually. Got another video duh tip. I from... love this one. You do? Because I don't like to use buttons. Really? I prefer to just do gestures. So, okay, all right, so this is the right tip for you. This is from Amir, who wants to replicate physical home buttons on the screen. Hi, Leo and Sarah, this is Amir Marfani, and I have a doctor for your show. It's about the home button on iPad. Let's suppose your home button is not working and you cannot get it fixed. We have an alternative way to get it work. You need to go to the settings on your iPad, then just tap on general option, then tap on accessibility, then you will find another option Assistive touch, just enable it. And as soon as you enable it, you will see a small circle on your iPad screen. And when you tap on it, it will pop up four more buttons, and one of them will be home button. And this home button will exactly work just like your main home button. So this is a nice tip I thought I'll share with you guys. Thanks and love your show. Bye-bye. Bye, Amir. Thank you so much. By the way, Amir had originally um, called in with an audio tip. And I couldn't understand them, so I said, I really want to use your tip, but I, you got to do it over because there was a lot of, like, crackling noise or something. You can create custom gestures. Yes, you can. <gasps> yes, you can. Anyway, thank you, Amir, uh, for, for playing along, and, and, and the video was great. Here's what you do. So you go into your general settings. Here, let's go back to the very beginning. General settings, and then you go into accessibility. Uh, we've talked about accessibility before. Then you go down to physical and motor section, assistive touch. You go ahead and turn that on. And at this point, you can see over in the left hand, I now have this little, what is that here? So if you click on it, I have now these sort of like hotkeys, right? I've got home, I've got favorites, which I can add to. That's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I've got Siri and I've got more options on my device like rotate the screen, mute, volume up, volume down, etc. Uh, I go ahead and you know take a screenshot, multitasking, whatever. Oh, I love this. 
Then you've got gestures, so it's you know kind of letting you know what uh, what your options are. But you've also got that home button. So if for some reason it doesn't bother you to have that little guy. It kind of looks like the moon. Well, my first iPad, out in the, the, upper uh, left. the uh, home button broke on me. So that I mean that's what Amir was saying yeah. is maybe your home button doesn't work anymore. Which of course I mean this is a, this is a, a godsend. You don't really have any other options. How did your home button break? It I don't know. Did. It just stopped responding. Like I'd have to hit it two or three times to get it to respond. Oh, that sucks. Which is how I got into using the uh, the gestures for opening and closing stuff because I didn't want to have to mess with it. Yeah, gestures are really really nice once you I get used to them. I actually don't mind soft buttons. I know a lot of people hate them. It's a taste thing. I yeah. like I like soft buttons. Yeah, I don't like the I don't like the buzzing so much. The buzz oh, the haptic, back to you. the yeah. haptic thing. Yeah. Well, no, none of that on the iPad. So no, that's, that. that's for sure. It's one it's a distinction. It's a real distinction between iOS and some of those other mobile OSs. But no, I love this. I love this sort of hovering button, and you, know, you can get deep into something. You know, if I'm in the App Store and I'm kind of looking around, and it's like I don't even know what I've got open or not. You just go ahead and it's yeah, pretty unobtrusive. Just get me, get me home again. Now yeah, mine's I love in that. the lower left. Yours is in the upper left. Oh, so I wonder if it, I can. Yeah, so you if just you turn yours. Yeah, yeah you, you just can move you it just around. put it wherever you want. Nice. I guess it's love it, that. It, it it has to snap to certain. I guess it can just be pretty much anywhere on a border. Anything, yeah. So if you're like, edge. I kind of want it right by between my apps and my settings, that's actually probably a better place for it. It's less obtrusive. So that's a great tip. I had no idea that existed. I mean, I, I think it's new in iOS 6. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I know that but the, I think that's uh, only about a yeah, week old. Yeah, the gestures existed before, but I'd never seen anything like that. So. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Thanks, Amir. Yes, thank you. Uh, we also got, um, speaking of the podcast app, uh, a tip from Richie. It's kind of funny. He sent us a question via email, and then he sent us an answer and said, <laughs> I, I already answered myself. His question was, is there any secret way to create a playlist with Apple's podcast app? I haven't figured it out. I have podcast playlists in my iTunes app, and iOS 6 wiped them out. What can I do to create playlists to use on an iPad or an iPad or an iPhone? I know that I can do it in Downcast, but can I do it in the podcast app? Then he wrote back and said, ah, I can actually now turn my question into a duh tip. Hmm. You just take your podcast playlist and go to info. Then in options, you change the type of media to music, huh. and voila. You can download your playlist as music, which is great for podcast nuts. Nice little tip, Richie. Yeah, nice it is. Hack. It is a tip. That's one of those. That's one of those things that makes iTunes unintuitive because mm -hmm. you think, well, it's a podcast, not music, so you wouldn't think to do that. But you sort of trick it into thinking, oh, okay, this is just something that you want to hear in order. It's your it's your music playlist, but it's podcast instead. You know, I. I uh, uh, the iPad 2 that uh, I used to use on the show until March came around and, and we upgraded our iPads is um, is t uh, temporarily uh, with my mother. Mm. She never had an iPad before and she kept saying, should I get one? And I said, why don't you just try out the iPad 2 first and get a sense for it. And then, you know, if you love it, then you go Retina because it'll be so much better uh, because we've sort of got this one that, that I'm not using all that often for testing. And her thing is, wow, this is the greatest thing, but iTunes is really awful, isn't it? Very unintuitive. <laughs> it's like the first, that, that's like the first feedback I've gotten from her. And she has a Mac already, so she's used to it. It's just that iTunes, as many of you know, is just weird sometimes, especially when you're trying to figure out how iTunes and iTunes on a computer, particularly even like a Windows machine, is supposed to talk to each other. So you're not alone if you uh, if you grumble about that too. So more feedback from folks, some questions, some answers. But first, let's kick it back over to Leo. Talk a little bit about how you can watch TV when you're nowhere near your living room. Uh, Sarah, <laughs> I stayed home because I wanted to watch TV. If I had only known, I could be sitting next to you watching TV. Not paying attention. Oh, that's I do that anyway, don't I? Thanks to Slingbox. You know about Slingbox. Slingbox turns your iPad into a television or your laptop or a lot of other devices. Here's what happens. You go, you go to Amazon, Best Buy, or Slingbox. You get the Slingbox. You hook it up to your home theater system, your DVR, your satellite box, your cable box, whatever you got. And then you hook it up to the Internet. Now the magic happens. Wherever you go... You can log on to your home theater system, password protected over the internet, and watch anything you could watch at home. You can control your DVR, playback recordings, create new recordings. You can, you, you, they even give you a remote control that looks just like the remote control, your dish or your DirecTV, whatever you've got, so you know exactly how to use it. 
Slingbox is really amazing. They've got software for the iPad that lets you watch any smartphone, the iPod Touch with Wi-Fi. Uh, of course, laptops or tablets. It really, no other system lets you do this. And by the way, there's no monthly fee. You buy it and you're good to go because you're already paying for your cable. Why, why should you pay twice? Slingbox, available at Best Buy and at Amazon, or you can learn more at slingbox.com slash twit. We love this sponsor because it just makes the iPad into kind of what it was meant to be, a personal television set. Try it today, slingbox.com slash twit. Now, I return you to Sarah Lane, who's undoubtedly paying close attention. Sarah? <laughs> Yes, So to Meredith you. Vieira hosts Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in the Middle of the Day? Wow, Tom. What year do you think this is? Because she's been doing that for about six. I had no idea because I don't usually launch Slingbox at this time of day. Oh, because but you're I'm, working. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, it's, it's... The I, final episode of Oprah Winfrey Show notably lacked what staple element? Oh. Commercials, a studio audience, a chair on stage, or guests? Oh, I, For a million dollars. Uh, I didn't watch it. I can't hear it. I, I I'm sure it. that no, there were there were guests because it was like, no, you know, all her all her big people, right? Her stage. Just answer the question, guy. Just answer I'm the question. Really. The last result, so this is the, this is the weird thing about Slingbox, right? Is Tom is getting to watch so. daytime TV uh, while he's actually on the clock uh, at Twit. This is his job, people. I mean, is that the best thing or what? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sarah, no, actually, you... this is exactly what Leo does. Oh, I know. Except that when Leo does it, it's because he's truly not listening to me. <laughs> he's, actually he's not actually illustrating anything. <laughs> it's that he's checking in on stuff well, on he's TV. He's got a lot of stuff to check in. He's uh, got his stories. He's got, he's got his stories, I'll say. Yeah, his stories. And he always goes, oh, it's probably Henry. It's probably my son who was watching this. He's got it set on Oh, he's spying on Henry. Channel. That's what he's doing. Yeah. 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 Well, he blames him, too. There's a lot of blaming that goes on. Leo <laughs> likes the Real Housewives. He's, you know, it's, he's Who not doesn't? alone. doesn't? They're real. You don't. I don't. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, I know you don't watch that show. There's no way. Hey, we got an email from Chris. Chris apparently is a time traveler, and he says... I just got back from the future, and I wanted to tip you off about the iPad Mini. It's great, because I'd like to know more about it. My favorite feature is that you can get it with a phone, reduced prices with contracts from Verizon and AT&T. And yes, people do have giant pockets in the future. Love you guys. This is what's so great about On Demand. This is why we make the show available as a podcast, because then people in the future can watch it and send us email. Exactly. However, I am going to assume, Chris, that this is wishful thinking on your part and not because you actually know something that we don't. What do you think about this idea? If you were to get an iPad mini, then maybe you've got some sort of a bundle where that next iPhone of yours I mean, could have, be a discount. They have the share everything plan. Yeah. I don't see them finding a compelling reason to give you a discount if you buy two. I guess because you would then increase your share everything plan, maybe. Maybe they, maybe they, they would do that. I just don't see this likely. Carriers are gonna be like, people are gonna buy the iPad mini, and they're going to buy the iPhone, and yeah. they're going to pay whatever we charge them. I'm, I'm trying to think of when this would be a good scenario. I, you know, for me, I feel like I've got an iPhone, I've got an iPad, I've got a Mac. I mean, I've, I've got it all, right? And an iPad mini... I know why. Why? I just, I just thought of it. Verizon will mm -hmm. do this, maybe AT&T, because you can do hotspot on your iPhone 5 with no extra charge. Uh -huh. So what they'll do is say, hey, buy an iPad mini Wi-Fi and, and bundle it in with an iPhone 5 and then you can use your iPhone 5 as your connection for the Wi-Fi. That is a very good point. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Hey Chris, you might be onto something here. Well, he's from the future. He I mean. is from the future, so you are on to something. Yeah. You're Tell us Send more us about the future, stock will you? tips next time. Tell us what the winning lottery numbers are, because I have seen Back to the Future Part 2, mm. and I know how mm. that all works. That's a documentary as well. Right. No, that's, 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 uh, it makes sense. I'm, I'm still trying to, just to finish my previous thought, it's like, I will get an iPad Mini because this is a show called iPad Today, so that's kind of the perk of doing yeah, the yeah. show, is that you got to have all the stuff. Well, now you have to have a shorter show. I gotta that's have, about the iPad Mini. Um, yeah. I, mi, I, iPad Half Day. Yeah. I've had this hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had minimum day at school. Uh, but, uh, but, but I do think that there are going to be a lot of people who, go, even if they say, wow, that's really cool, I like the iPad mini, neat form factor, it's like, can you really justify having 
all of, you know, a big iPad and a mid-size iPad and an iPhone. It's like, I don't know. I, I wonder. I wonder how many people are going to say, no, I do need them all. Well, I know p some people will, but I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to justify that. So maybe there's some pricing bundles that are going to seem more attractive. Got another email uh, from Carmen. She's got a little bit of a question. She says, there's a rumor that there will be an actual full-size iPad refresh at the iPad mini announcement in October. Do you think this is true? Tom, you're holding your head in your hands. So there's a rumor that at the rumor announcement, they'll be announcing another rumor. And do you think, do you think it's true? true? I, uh, there is no iPad mini. Let's be clear. There isn't. We're, act, we're talking, and I'm just as guilty as you, about, as, if it, as if it's real. Yep. No one knows for sure. Well, somebody does, but there is no official word. Whoever that knows there is, is not talking. Mini. Yeah. And it might be that there is no iPad mini. Yeah. We, we truly don't know. Now, based on how accurate the leaks were, meaning, you know, stuff that had been written about the iPhone 5 before it was officially announced, based on how accurate a lot of those leaks were, I would, you know, I would I would bet a wager. It seems probable. That the, yeah, that the iPad mini is probably happening, and people do say October. But then piling rumor on top of rumor, it starts to get useless to speculate. I, I really don't think that they would refresh the iPad. I'm not saying you it's impossible, they... but I think it's unlikely. You don't think because now that we've got a nice A6 chip in the iPhone 5 that it'd be a great time to bump up the iPad to an A6 chip, especially and since the iPad And then mini. launch another one in March? Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, what, no. Then what do they have left? Yeah. I mean, it, it just doesn't. Uh, maybe a, a small refresh, the way they do like MacBook Pros, sometimes they just give them a faster processor. That's kind of what you're talking about. Right. I just don't see them doing that and saying, oh, but then we'll also have another one coming out. Right. It's well, hard to say. I know, I know. Let's go rumor crazy. They'll bump up the processor to an A6 chip in October at the mythical launch of the iPad Mini in, in the regular iPad, and then in March they'll announce how they've um, reinvented television. Yeah, there and you that'll be the next there iPad. You go. Right. That'll be the new new iPad. The new new. I don't know. We don't know, Carmen. I'd like to think so, but. I I don't know. I, I feel like this uh, this iPad is pretty snappy. So <laughs> Cake Phone says, I just asked Siri. She said, sorry, there's no effing thing as an iPad penny. <laughs> Siri's Siri has saucy. gone Yeah, she's uh, she's cussing at everybody. I really don't know how you she just misheard you, I guess. <laughs> you gotta speak more clearly. Enunciate. Open your mouth a little wider when you speak. I don't like you, <laughs> Siri. Uh, Ken Wright, like I told you, we got a lot of emails this week, but they're good. Ken was talking uh, in response to me last week saying I've got the iPad in the kitchen all the time and I know that I've got options about how to you know, cover it and make sure that it doesn't get wet or splatter, but I just don't always have it in anything and so Sometimes it does get a little bit wet or I'm at least worried about it. He says, I have the same problem as you. Some of friends of mine gave me a cool kitchen mount for my iPad. Ooh. There are a few of these. We have one. Do I don't you? remember which one. I'm well, curious to see. When you see the picture, one. his is called the original kitchen iPad rack. He says it's about twenty-seven bucks. We've got nope. a link to it uh, for sale on Amazon. Not the same one. It look. I mean, it, there. Are, like he said, there are there a lot of go. these. Yeah. This is sold by something called Kitchen Acrylics. That's nice. Um, he says what you do is you mount a thin, clear acrylic mount with three screws to the underside of a kitchen cabinet. The farther back from you know the front of the cabinet you mount it, the less visible it is. And when you need to use it, you have a separate acrylic piece that slides into slots on the mount and then you hang the iPad under the cabinet at an angle. The iPad rests on this second piece. It's very sturdy and secure. When it's not in use, the bigger piece stores away in a drawer in the cabinet out of the way. I think this is a must-have for people who use their iPads mm. when they're cooking. And then he sent us a picture, actually, of his kitchen mount in action. He has a very nice kitchen. Oh, his looks better than the, 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 the vendor picture. It does, yeah. yeah. I think it's also because he's got all that nice Cuisinart stuff. Uh, I think stuff. you're right. I think that's why. You know, very, very brushed steel kind of a it thing going on. It fits in, very, yeah. But I really do like this idea because you're probably not going to utilize really all that much counter space right under it. But it still just gets it up and out of the way so mm -hmm. that, you know, if you've got a sponge or you know, there's something, you, right. you like the idea of it being mounted but not actually taking up. Our sits on the countertop. It's wooden, has mm -hmm. a little cork board thing so you can pin, like, stuff to it, which we never do, but... What would you pin to it? I think recipes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, it can just be part of the whole... Shopping list. The whole so, yeah. thing. Yeah, I, th I think, and those are nice, too. I mean, I pretty much just, I'm just kind of using this on my uh, countertop, but more and more I'm, as I, you know, try to 
cook more things. I make more and more of a mess. So can I think this looks nice, and I also like that it's see-through. So you kind of almost don't see it. Yeah, our solution to that was never to cook. Oh. And then the iPad that's never another, gets dirty. That's another solution. Yeah. Do you ever go to the beach with your iPad? Because that would be another place that you yes. might want something that's sort of up that's and out good, of the yeah, way. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's when Gladlock bags. I think. That's uh, what I did. Last time I was at the beach. Really? Yep. With your iPad? Yeah. Just everything goes inside the... Just put in a Ziploc the... bag, yep. And then you know that you're not going to have sand in your home button. Right. Which is probably how your home button broke in the first place. No, it wasn't a different iPad. Oh, shoot. I thought I had it all figured Maybe out. Maybe that's why that first iPod broke, because I never took it to the beach and it was sad. Maybe. Electronics and beaches don't really mix. In fact, I've started to like the beach less for this reason. <laughs> Really? Because I have a hard See, time most people not go, having these my stupid stuff. electronics. I should enjoy the beach, but not Sarah Lane. She's no, like, no, the beach needs to adapt to my electronics. Because if it's a beautiful day, it's like I want to have my phone. I want to be taking pictures. I want to have my stuff. I mean, it's a sickness. Mm -hmm. I can't be alone here. And I've started to feel They're like friends. when I'm at the beach, and now you've got the sand and the water and the salty air, and I don't want to be here anymore because my iPad might break. <laughs> Stupid not, not even because it did break, just the fear. Right. Yeah. No, it's just Stressful. I can't relax. Hey, we love hearing from you guys. We love your videos. We love your voicemails. We love your emails and your pictures and all that good stuff. Keep it up. You can write us at iPad Today at twit.tv. Our voicemail number, it's Google Voice uh, Mailbox, is 757-504-IPAD. That's 757-504-4723. Or you can send us a video, just upload it somewhere, send us the link. We don't open attachments, and there were a few attachments this week, and I just delete them without even looking at them. And I hate ignoring you, so please send us links rather than attachments. Tom, we're about to get into the best part of I any know. iPad Today episode, and that I'm is the ready. AppCap Awards. So get your app cap ready, make sure it's on snug, and we'll go to Leo, who's now going to tell us a little something from our friends at Citrix. Sarah, you thought you were rid of me, didn't you? Well, you're not rid of me yet, young lady. I'm going here to talk to you about our friends at Citrix and go to my PC. Did you know you could use an iPad to go to work to access your office computer, Mac or Windows from anywhere? You can with go to my PC from Citrix. Everybody knows Citrix. They're the best company for remote access, literally. They're the ones. They wrote the book on remote access, and now they've made it very easy to do. Uh, if you are, you know, I've seen, I've seen you chafe sitting at your desk out there and thinking, I wish I could go home early. I wish I could take tomorrow off. Just think, if you took Fridays off, you'd get 20% more life in your life. <laughs> but how do you get the work done? Go to my PC. See, the point is, before you go home tonight, go to your office computer, Windows or Mac, Visit gotomypc.com, get our 30-day free trial with the offer code IPAD, okay? And then leave. And don't come back tomorrow. Just log in from your iPad, and you could do anything you could do at work. You could send and receive email, run any program, access any network resource, edit files, send them, download them. It's like the sky's the limit. And they've done such a nice job of making this easy to use, fast, reliable, and... I might add, secure, so you don't have to worry about using it at an open access Wi-Fi spot. You're absolutely securely connected. In fact, it's a great way to surf safely at an unsafe location on your iPad using Windows or OS X. Uh, you got to try this. Visit gotomypc.com, click the Try It Free button. The promo code is iPad. Go to mypc.com, click the Try It Free button, promo code iPad. And you're uh, and you're good to go. The the app for iPhone, iPad, free. They have, don't tell anybody. They have an Android app too. Go to mypc.com. Use the offer code iPad to try it free for 30 days. You're gonna love it. And we're back. 25% more life. You know, it's I funny. I wasn't. I was looking over here. Uh, you know, I was distracted by something. And when I looked back at you, I realized your hair is a little darker. No, it's it's cap. Oh cap. my yeah. gosh! I know you probably didn't. It doesn't look that different. I just thought maybe you had dyed your hair a little. Right, right. A little right. shoe polish. Yeah, no, just, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's my stocking cap. Well, it's very nice. Thank you. It's really nice. I know it's not as fancy as yours. Well, no, I'm, I'm geek and That's you are awesome. chic. I've just got the fisherman's sort of toque. <laughs> yeah. Really? Like well. off Newfoundland. Did, wait, can you tell me the backstory of, like, who made that or where did this come from? 
I just grew my beard. Oh, I don't the know beard what you're talking is, about. it's just, it's so curly and almost like a caramel It grows color. fast, you know, what? the show's run a little long and it's just. We know how Leo yaps yeah. and yaps about Citrix. So, <laughs> but you know, by the time he's done. They are paying the bills. Tom's got a long <laughs> apricot beard and here we go. This is the AppCap Awards, everybody. This is the Woo! part of the show where we talk about our favorite apps of the week for really no reason at all, just because we like to wear hats and we like to say, this is the app that I like this week based on these really good reasons. I'm going to go ahead and start You know why? Off. Why? Reasons. Because reasons. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That should actually be our next Twitch show. Because <laughs> reasons. Let's do that one. I, sh I think we should. Yeah. And it could be about, you know, things that have reasons. So this is uh, should be a surprise to nobody. In fact, I'll let the chat room, like, I'll give you one guess. What do you think my app cap is going to be this week? What could it possibly be? Woohoo! Yeah. Well, they're a little delayed. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Yeah, know, teens. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Bad Piggies. Oh, uh, yeah, Xtomb got it. Bad Piggies. Xtomb, of course, yes. So this is the follow up to the wildly popular, in fact, to the point where I was really sick of hearing about it, Angry Birds. This is Rovio's, that's the company that makes Angry Birds. This is their, their follow-up in the franchise. Angry Birds has basically been everywhere, right? There was Angry Birds, and then there was Angry Birds Rio, and then there was Angry Birds in Space, and it finally got to the point where they're like, okay, we should probably reinvent this franchise somehow. So it's not just another Angry Birds, but it's still the same idea. It's still the characters that you know and love. But this time, you're on the side of the pigs rather than the birds. So there's a little bit of backstory there. But for purposes of demonstration, I won't get too far into that. I'll just go ahead and show you. Um, okay, let's start on uh, number three. This is actually, by the way, I'm really bad at Angry Birds, always have been. So I'm even worse with Bad Piggies, at least right off the bat. But this is kind of cool. So what I'm trying to do is create a, almost like a rolling mechanism for this little pig. And then I have stuff like these, um, what do you call these things where, you know, like you have for a fire? Bellows. Where you can create a air, bellows. wind. Bellows. Bellows, mm -hmm. is that what that is? Okay, so that's what this is. So what I do is I figure out, okay, how can this pig be in something that will roll? I think we're, wait, which way do I, no, I want it to go this way. Physics. Yeah, because physics. Now, oh shoot, I went the wrong way, didn't I? Uh, See, I told, you I, was, backwards. I told you I was bad at this. So, okay, now here we go. Now, oh no, ah! Hey! Uh, okay, this is hard. You guys are wow, all laughing this, at me. because This I, looks frustrating. I know some of you guys are really good at this sort of thing, but I am not. The audio there listeners are loving this. All part. right, okay. Yeah, audio listeners, I'm so sorry. So what you're trying to do is, you know, So Sarah get... is using the bellows to push the pig come in on, come the on, come on, come on, come on, come on. down Slowly but surely. Now, now she's on an upslope, she's caught. Uh. On the upslope, she's having a hard time oh getting my gosh. enough bellow power. Am I really at the end? You can the do this, pig. by the way, too. You don't actually she's have to. She's pushing the boost button now. It's oh. not working, and the pig is not going to make it to the star in the little white box. We're so sorry. It's that's just pretty much. Not going to that's why Angry Birds is so frustrating to me. But I'm only on level three of like the very first level, or you know, game three. But the, but this is actually kind of fun, right? So the whole idea is it's a physics game, just like Angry Angry Birds was as popular as it was. Because it was cute and there was, you know, cute little characters, they made cute sounds, but it's that physics game that's fun. You know, you pull back and mm -hmm. then you figure out what the angle is and, and how much, you know, strength that it needs. And physics games are really cool and they work so well on the iPad. So this is the same idea. It's really just a, a matter of saying, okay, I need the right formula. So this is probably what I should have done from They're the They're saying you should put the wheel underneath the pick. I did that. Not to the side. Well, okay, I just did that last time, remember? Wait, you, you also have more more um, uh, things to use. Oh, I did? Yeah, so go back. So you ha you can put more boxes and more wheels down. Uh, well, this is why I'm And that'll be more dummy. sturdy. Well, I think you should add boxes <laughs> diagonally. Oh, really? Oh, like so, this? So, no, 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 no. You have two more boxes down there. See? Oh. There you go. Now put the, the two Back wheels down like a, <laughs> like a car. There you go. Holy now, it's gonna, now it's going to be really stable. For oh, bad piggies are design. hard. Wow, you guys. Now with you two know, wheels, no problem. She got to the star just fine, audio listeners. Uh, well, now, now I'm stuck because now I got to go back to the map. See, that's the thing about the, these. You're not done. Now I'm not no, done, and around. I'm screwed because I got to get here to go to the next level. Well, here if you go, go back, I think you had another bellows to you use. You can't go back. Restart. Well, He's saying give up. See, see, you Quit. have bellow. There you Sorry. go. Oh. 
Oh now gosh. you can do both ways. Holy wow. You guys, now I'm actually kind of enjoying this because I realize how you actually play. You play like this. Aha. Uh -huh. See? Now you've developed a car. Teamwork. Oh, you broke it. Okay, I hate everybody. I'm done with this game. <laughs> I'm done with this game. That's so frustrating. That's Angry Birds. Now you are, I'm sorry, Bad Piggies. That's Bad Piggies. You've probably heard, um, I think right now in the Google Play Store, it's free. At least that's what somebody told me. But Bad Piggies HD is the one that you want for the iPad. You can get Bad Piggies regular, which is the iPhone version for 99 cents. The HD version is the cool one. It's the one that you know looks nicest. That is $2.99. Bad Piggies HD, $2.99. If you liked Angry Birds, you got to have this. You know that they're going to be rolling out other levels and, and other you know Bad Piggies in space and blah, blah, blah. Um, as it gets more popular. And it hit number one in the paid-up store, I think, within three hours Bad of Piggies going live Rio earlier. And it gets sued by the Olympics. Right. And that'll be the end And of that'll it. be the end of it. Yeah. And Rovio, Rovio will go, go under. Well, you yeah. know, Rovio, they have not been pulling in the revenue that they were enjoying back in more of their earlier Angry Birds days. So this is the sort of game... This is pushing them back it, to the top. It's very important yeah. that Rovio does well if with this. If you want Rovio to survive, you need to buy this game. <laughs> right. it's, it's charity, is Help what you're Rovio saying. help you with your <laughs> bad piggies with your addiction. addiction. Well, I'm going to help you. As you can, just by looking at me, you know I run. You're obviously a very I'm, athletic I'm, yeah, person. Yeah, exactly. That's it, what, exactly uh, what this is Probably from the cops is what you would think in sure. this getup. Yeah. But, um, I, I do like to run. Uh, it's, by, it's cheap exercise. And a lot of times when I'm traveling, I don't know where to run. Like, what's the good place? You know, especially if you're in a strange city, you know, what, what's, what's going to be not getting you into, not even just a weird neighborhood, but a place with lots of traffic lights and hard streets to cross. Uh, there's lots of apps that will help you find routes, uh, but the one that I found that I enjoyed most recently is called Walk, Jog, Run. So even if you're not a runner, it's actually good for, for walking or jogging as well. I love this. And, uh, and what it does is you, you tell it to find you, uh, so it's got me here in Petaluma at the studio, and I'm like, okay, I want to go for a run. What's a good route? So I find nearby routes. Look at all these routes. You can filter by distance. I don't know who's running the 41-mile route, <laughs> Is there... but you're lying, whoever you are. But you could say, like, hey, I'm training but, yeah. for a half marathon. Right. Like, I wanna... I've really got to run 12 miles I wanna right go, now. I want to go three miles. That's my 5K run. Uh, and then you see you have all of these folks with their roots, and this is their starting locations. And then you, you can click into there, and it says, okay, here's, here's the route where this person starts and where they ran. It's near where you are, so you could pick up along the way. It shows you their mile markers, so you know how, you know, uh, when, when you're starting, how, when you're into one mile and two and three. Uh, and and these, it's, it's a great way to kind of shop through and say, okay, this, this route's near where I am. It's about the distance I want to go. It's a, uh, it's a great, great way to go. And they also have some other stuff in here where you can create your own routes and contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's can, cool. And they have some little training sessions, workout sessions. I like Nike Plus for that kind of stuff, but it's nice that they include it in here. Uh, but it's just really, especially when you're traveling and you're like, the concierge might have a jogging map, but the, I've found that those are usually just really useless. Yeah, uh, I, I don't even think I'd think to ask the hotel about something like yeah, that. Yeah, or a lot of times I'm staying in a hotel that doesn't have a concierge, so you right. know, this, this is the kind of thing that uh, takes the place. I like when it. you're staying in an Airbnb, for example, you right. don't have anybody to ask. That Airbnb <laughs> room. When you're done setting fire to the apartment <laughs> in Paris, you'd love to go on a little run. But yeah, yeah this down actually, the Seine. This comes in the handy. Left bank. Yes, exactly. All the time when I travel, I always pack workout gear because I just, it's wishful thinking. I hope that I'm going to exercise once I'm there. Now, if there's a gym in the hotel, sometimes I go. Sure. But sometimes there isn't, or it's small, or it's just, you know, I kind of actually want to be out and about. If you're on about. vacation and you're in a place with great weather, you kind of don't want to be right. stuck in a room with a bunch of other sweaty people looking at the pretty Ex place. Exactly. Yeah, if you're in Hawaii, you, go out, you don't want to run in a gym, no, even if it's the, the nicest gym ever. Yeah. Exactly. But you don't necessarily, well, in a beach, it's kind of hard to get lost. But, you know, maybe you want to run through the hills or you're in a city again, and it's like, I'd love a route that's around three miles, but well, I just I don't know this, where to start. I uh, so this up in Napa great. over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, I, I'm not familiar with this town. What's a good place? And I, I found a route, and I didn't follow it exactly, but it helped me to figure out like okay so if I follow this guy here then I can run out in the country by the vineyards so I'm running along looking at grapes it was awesome did you see the guy who made the map no I didn't no 
I was look. I should look for him. <laughs> That, that would actually be kind of helpful is like, you know, so-and-so submitted this map. He runs at 6 a.m. He's out right now. Here's, <laughs> how, here's how far he is into his run. <laughs> yeah, you can he's... see him. Find my friends. <laughs> yeah, there he is. It's Go glimpse. Ahead and say hello. Meets walk Give him a high five. Keep going. Mile four. Way to go. You can do it. You can finish. So this is called Walk, Jog, Run. Uh, it's $4.99. So yeah. it's for people who are really going to use it. Yeah, it's it. not. It's not. A free, you want to be able to use it more than once. This mm -hmm. is not a, a fly-by-night. There, are, you can do a web search and find a lot of this kind of information. But the reason I ended up getting this app is I was finding that doing those web searches was giving me really crappy info yeah. for the area I was in in Napa, uh, and this this fit the bill perfectly. Yeah, it's also you. You know, it's not really going to get junked up with stuff that isn't relevant because who who would bother? Yeah. You know, it's for no, people, is, who people who are actually wogging, wogging. They're wogging, they're jocking. <laughs> yeah. A new craze, wogging. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's fast kind of, walking. It's just, really. Yeah, it's a little, it's like that Olympic walking. It's low impact right. jogging, <laughs> wogging. Reminds me of Anchorman. Yogging, yeah. jogging. Walking. That's a good one. Walk, jog, run, and of course, bad piggies from me. And that will do it for this episode of iPad Today. Tom Merritt, thanks so much it's for. It's over. It is. Oh. Yeah, I know. That was too much fun. I know. It's it, well, we really get going, and then we start wearing the hats, and you think that the party's never going to end. I know, right? Unfortunately, it's it cruel, does. The way you each do week, that. each yeah. week it ends actually, and there are a lot of tears, um, <laughs> but you'll get over it. Um, but thanks, thanks for uh, filling in for Leo this week. You look great. I mean, I don't really think you should take that off no. ever. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Oh, you mean the hat? Yeah, the, the hat. black hat. Yeah, it's kind of warm actually. It's very we're, comfy. Well, yeah. we're you know it's going to be winter before we know it, right. and you're going to want Getting that. Ready. So maybe it could just be part of your thing. Yeah. Tech news today, tomorrow. Obviously, I'm if you're wearing it I'm going for a like longshoreman it. look. Well, with you this hat. have achieved it. Thank you. It is achievable. You saw it here. <laughs> How much is that, by the way? For the your, hat? For your hat, yeah. I don't have any clue. Yeah, five yeah. bucks. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You, want, you want it? Yeah. <laughs> Give me I'd five bucks. All right. I'd love to wear that hat. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Oh, Anytime look. You want. Oh, look. look. They're actually sold out. Well, you know what's weird is that um, they got a bunch of men also <laughs> with, with lovely beards <laughs> for for the to, to model the think, uh, Wasn't it Tony hats? that got this one? I forget. I don't know. Wow. Wow, I owe him some money. I don't I even know what to say. Were... I had no idea it went this deep. Black and ginger. It's starting to look a little, uh, I don't even want to. <laughs> you know what? That's it for this episode of iPad Today. Thank High you, everybody, time. for watching and listening. If you joined us live, thanks so much. If you're watching on demand, thank you for watching whenever you feel like it. And thanks to everybody who subscribes each week. Um, and that's it from us. Leo will be back next week. Um, in the meantime, hey, you know what's uh, uh, featured in iTunes right now is my other show, i5 for the iPhone. Congratulations. Just wanted to say thank you very much. Excellent. Yeah, well, it's Glenn Rubenstein's doing because he's Go download it. really good. Subscribe. Marketing Tell your friends. Us. Yeah, please do. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for watching. I've had a day. See you next week, same time, same place. Ow! Ooh.